Okay, so to close our meeting, we'll ask again, like we do every meeting, do you believe Park Grove Community Church has done everything it can and it must close its doors by show of hands? All right, we will continue the good work of the Compass Committee, do our best to keep the church doors open, at least until a new pastor arrives. Meeting adjourned. See you Sunday. Here's one for the road here. Jumper cables. Actually, um... Yes, well, I have some in my trunk. Yeah, maybe we could. Uh, you borrowed my keys because you're. Uh, have something besides the usual donuts next time. Maybe mix it up a little. Is that a question, Chuck? Yeah, you know, I would not I mind having that fruit and vegetable platter again. I don't have. It was a nice step up from. Oh. Come on. Okay. Seriously. That's literally twice this month. You guys think the whole neighborhood was affected? Did we pay our bills? Yes, we paid our bills. No, it's not the whole neighborhood. It's just us. I can go seek anyone. <laughs> Park Grove Community Church has lost its pastor and its way and is closing its doors unless it reinvents itself despite itself with the help of Chuck. The Committee Nothing. Don't worry, I know where there's some candles. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Just use your cell phone. Thank you, we can use that to find the candles. No, wait for it. See? Oh, don't burn yourself with that. No, it's oh, an app. I think I'm gonna go check the breaker box over here. Yeah. Well, hold, hold on, isn't that my job? Excuse me? Isn't that something the man is supposed? I mean, I am uh, uh, the head of several committees, so. And is one of them the breaker box committee? No such committee, you made that up. Mm-hmm, I know, I did. This box is not the problem. Probably the main box somewhere else. Yeah, it's, it's uh, probably the, the main box. Where is that? Unless you are Thomas Edison or something, I think I'll have a better chance of finding it, believe you me. So I'll go. Chuck, do you have a light? Uh, I don't smoke. Funny, Chuck. What is this? So, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's oh. it's a light. So Yes, I do have a Oh, well, that's light. cute. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there. Yeah, I was just saying. Um, yeah, check those fuses, probably those fuses. Should we get some cards? Huh? Maybe some. How are we gonna play cards in the dark? It's about what we value here at Park Grove, right? And then, you know, based on those values. Nope. Sure. Sorry, we, uh, we take a look at what's working mm -hmm. and uh, have the courage to change what isn't. Mm -hmm. Be innovative, right? Isn't that what Daniel was saying? Mm -hmm. Before Mr. Riley kept cutting him off. Yeah him and his agenda. So this is not it. That's not. No. Okay. Let's look down here. So replace old programs, worship styles, that sort of thing. So more people come to church. Uh, no, no. I, I meant ultimately, don't we value connecting more people to God, right? Not just, you know, inviting more people to church. There's a difference, right? Was that it? I don't know. I'm not the head of the breaker box committee. Well, let's just see. <laughs> oh. No, that's not it. Oh. This old church, there's got to be another one down here. You know, Daniel kept using that word, innovative. Mm -hmm. But what is that supposed to look like? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it just means, you know, looking for things that are getting stale, mm -hmm. like uh, Glenda's donuts. <laughs> I mean, like being open to questions, you know? I mean, most people coming into the church for the first time, they're going to have strange questions. OK. I think the candles are in here. At least they're strange for us. We've been here for forever. So you don't think we're open to questions? Here you go. Ah, candlestick holders, candlestick. <gasps> Perfect. Um, actually, let me, let me trade you. Try this one. Oh, there you go. Oh, Perfect. Well, what kind of questions? Like, what's the Lord's Prayer? What's the Lord's Prayer? Everybody knows the Lord's Prayer. No, you see, that's exactly what I mean. Not everyone knows everything. Right, 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 right. What I'm trying to say is that the more rigid you are, the less, I mean, the more rigid people are, the less people are willing to try new things. Look, I know you're talking about me. I'm sitting right here, okay? And it makes no sense to me. I'm sorry, Daniel. And I'm not, I'm not rigid. I'm traditional. Okay, fine. They're completely different oh, oh, things. Okay, fine, Mr. Traditional. How about this? 
What is it that we value the most at Park Grove? Is it bringing more people into the church or is it connecting more people with God? Oh, not this again. No, I'm serious. It's like I was saying earlier. If we do value connecting more people with God, then shouldn't we be, I don't know, exploring changes to make that happen? Be more innovative? Oh, innovation, innovation. Look, this is a church, not a science lab where you conduct wild experiments. I think people like Daniel are, are just looking for new ways of doing old things. Ah, yeah, without the skeptics killing every idea before it starts. Let's yeah, I don't see. think Daniel is trying to upset the apple cart by saying no to the old guard, like Mr. Riley sometimes, mm -hmm. Glenda. Mm -hmm. Or me. Uh, actually, Mrs. Beasley, I'd say that you're more willing than most to try out new things here at Park Grove. Well, thank you, Chuck. Let's look down here. Mm -hmm. What about that alternative worship service from a couple years back? Yeah, what about it? We tried it for six months. It didn't take, didn't stick, so stop. It, it didn't stick? No, it didn't stick. Well, I happen to know something that did stick. What? My family. Look, the only reason that, that we're still here is because of that worship service. Now, don't tell Riley this next part, but I actually happen to like the traditions of the church. I do, I think they're important. You know, they can form who we are now, what we value, but what happens when we become bound by these traditions? What then? All right, I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. How about introducing a church app for the smartphone? A church app? Absolutely, you could have sermon notes, lyrics to the hymns, downloadable sermon well, podcasts. Well, you are serious, you are dead serious right now. Oh. You are dead serious about having smartphones in church. This one just came what to me. What is the matter with this you? This one just came to me, and I think you're going to love it. Uh-huh. We change out the communion bread. Get rid of those wafers. Oh. They taste like paper anyway. Wafers. Wafers change. The, there's nothing wrong. The way. Let me tell. That is one thing we cannot change, okay? So take that off your little mental list. And there you go again. Okay, whatever. But how do we get others on board without upsetting the apple cart? Well, maybe it's not about upsetting or not upsetting the apple cart, right? Maybe it's just about getting a, a whole new apple cart. But we still value the apples, right? Connecting people to God. Maybe we just need a new cart. Oh, build on that value with new ways of connecting people with apples. Uh, uh, God. There you go. <laughs> now we are getting it all. Yeah. Except for the lights, of course. Yeah. Is this it? Let me see. Ah! It could be. This might be it. Okay. Failure and risk. Something I learned in socioeconomic class in college. Mm. That's the importance of innovation. I know what. I just think we need to be ready about... to answer questions. Okay. And not just turn up our noses at them. What does that mean exactly? Huh? Innovation in a church. Listening to the new people showing up so we can better connect with them. And in order to do that, Seems to me you got to be willing to try different stuff. Try new stuff. Try new stuff sounds like a sales job, not a church. Naysayer. Okay, fine. Oh. I think it's about placing importance on exploring new changes, trying different things. Like I said, what is it that we value? Connecting people to God. Of course, I give you that. Okay, then. We need to be willing to change based on that value, right? Change, 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 change. It's like some uh, newfangled, innovative whatchamagidget to explain why the church is failing. And I'm not sure that's the intention of the church in the first place. Of course it is. Jesus, the original, newfangled, innovative change agent. Ah, there we go. Is that the culprit? The, yep. Oh. There we go. And then there was light. Mm. This place looks better in the dark, though, doesn't it? You know, it, it makes sense what? to help our church move forward, looking at what we're good at, our tradition, and build on that with new ideas that provide more opportunities for people to connect with God. I'm just saying that I don't think that it would hurt to try it a little different. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, no, no. no there, there are plenty of things to fix around here, so how about we find something worth fixing? Like, uh, I don't know, the electrical system? <laughs> I do not know why we would set ourselves up for failure if something isn't even broken. We only fail if we don't learn anything from it. Hayden is right. We need to try new things, but still offer old things. Try it, tweak it, try it again, 
tweak it again. Always listening to the new people as they come through the front door. Instead of always just saying, oh yeah, we tried that and it didn't work. Oh, by, by the way, um, Daniel loves the word innovation. Guilty. But I, I, I tend to think of it more like if we don't have a plan and we don't know what we're doing, then we're bound to fail. I mean, isn't failing just a part of living? <laughs> but it's the fear of failure that, that's going to keep us stuck in the same place. Oh, we will uh, fail. We will fall on our collective faces, but how we respond to failure will determine whether we move forward or stay stuck behind. So if we're going to fail, let's fail really well. Seriously? And where does the money come from for all of these uh, wonderfully innovative ideas that fail? We don't have money problems, Mr. Riley. We have idea problems. Look, I know you all think I'm rigid. I get that. There are plenty of people like me. It is okay, okay to be comfortable in a church without always having things changing. You're right. Okay, there's nothing wrong with being comfortable in church. But I think that we also have to have innovation as well. We need both. Boy, you love that word. So, with that being said, Who's down to change the communion bread out? You, you have got to be kidding me. This has nothing to do with communion bread. Well, actually, it has everything to do with bread, just not that Hawaiian bread that Daniel keeps talking about. That's good bread. Okay, fine, sure, sure. Uh, naysayer thing again. All right, first off, we need to take this to the larger church body, see if they buy in, maybe take a survey. A survey to change the communion bread. Ooh, or I know, we could add a bread committee and they could figure it out. Limited inputs. I think too often congregations try to get everybody involved in the decision-making process, when in reality, it should just be uh, a diverse and qualified group of people. Give the church leadership, the, uh, the clergy, and the laity a chance to stretch their creative legs, so to speak. Let decision makers make the, the best, at least quickest decision to succeed. Or fail. Fast. Yes, please. And we can grow from what we learn, right? Failure can be the foundation for a breakthrough that gets us back up on our feet. You know, I kind of like the candles. What do you mean? Yes. Mm, that's nice. That's cool. How many church committee members does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> or turn the lights back on. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes one. With a great inspirational idea. Yes, a leader to try something new. Without all the naysayers to find something wrong with it. All right, Mr. Riley. I think that's one way that great things can happen in the church. One person, inspired, motivated by God to take action. To help lead. Sometimes all you need is one. With a candle. Guys, you do realize the meeting's been over for like 10 whole minutes now, right? Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, probably get mm. Time flies when you go. <laughs> can't see anymore. <laughs> oh, good. Just this minute, right now. Good, good, good. This is my office. Oh, so, good. so they were the ones with the little rabbits. Yeah, we don't have to talk about them.